Hello and welcome to the DIY Investing YouTube channel. We are working through every company in the S&P 500 and today is Dexcom Incorporated, ticker DXCM. Over the next few minutes, I'll discuss my thoughts about the valuation of this company and its business quality. First up, Dexcom has a market cap of $35 billion, enterprise value of $34 billion. So we can see maybe a little extra cash in this balance sheet. It's not leveraged and that tends to be a good sign for a higher quality company. They operate in the healthcare equipment and supplies industry. I've seen mixed results in this industry. Some are quite good. Some are quite bad. A lot of it depends upon the moat around their systems. It appears that they are a medical device company focused on the design, development, and commercialization of continuous glucose monitoring systems in the United States internationally, um, primarily for use by people with diabetes as well as by healthcare providers. The products include Dexcom G6, diabetes management, real time API. Um, they are designed to replace finger stick blue glucose blood glucose testing for diabetes treatment. That seems like it would be a really good industry, really good product. Um, has a next generation system as well and a collaboration and license agreement with Verily Life Sciences, developed blood based or interstitial glucose monitoring systems. So sounds really interesting as a business, seems like it could be very promising. Um, that is a type of product um, that would work quite well. Um, and so it's something that could be very profitable, I would think, because probably once you start using it, you're unlikely to go back if it actually works. So really interesting. Now, that's from the business standpoint, but when I look at this return on invested capital chart, it really doesn't tell me a lot. I mean, because this number is so big in 2005, this massive negative 60,000% loss, uh, everything looks like a flat line here. So, um, we can just look at the numbers. So you were, it looks like you're profitable from 2002 to 2004, but since 2005, you've lost money. Um, negative 85%, negative, 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 negative. Profitable, profitable, profitable. So the last three years from 2019 through 2021 have been profitable, but every year before 2018 was a loss. So it looks like this is basically a startup period, um, doing research, new stuff, and in, in three years, they have now started making profits. Now, what's kind of crazy to me, so a lot of these key statistics aren't gonna be very helpful to us. You think 10 year median returns, you know, negative 21%, negative 14%. Obviously these numbers, if true, in terms of going forward results are not good. You would not invest in numbers like this. Um, but when you see something like a gross profit margin of 66% and free cash flow 3.2%, you can see there's probably some leverage here that can go as the company grows, it could start to look better. Um, all the valuation ratios look ridiculously high. PE of 177, price to book of 15, price to sales of 13. This is really the kicker for me. When you have a company like this that's growing quickly, um, you see these 40% revenue growth, 44% asset growth. I'm not as concerned about price to earnings ratio because that's such fast growth that again, operating leverage can save you from a lot of that. What it can save you from is price to sales. Price to sales at 13 is just too high. I would never pay more than 10 times sales for a company, ever, period. So I would say this company is overvalued. It's obscenely overvalued. Price to sales of 10 is a very high price. Price to sales of 13 is unconscionable. I mean, think about this. This is a $35 billion company. They earn $2.5 billion in revenue. That's not profit, that's revenue. So converting that into profits is going to require a big change there. And so you're paying 13 times that number, you have expenses on top of that. I mean, look, operating profit, 266. So you're paying four times 34, 130 times operating profit. It's not good. You're paying 200, you know, is it 200 times? No, like 20 plus times? No, like 40 times um, gross profit. It's just, these numbers don't add up. They don't add up. You know, you're like 20 times gross profit. 20 times gross profit. That's before you pay your people. <laughs> it's just, this is this is not a workable valuation. The company's simply overvalued. Um, but but let's see what we can see on some, some of the numbers. When we look at an earnings per share basis, you can see that they were losing money up to 2018. But they have been turning a profit since 2019. And unfortunately, we don't see stable growth. You went up an additional billion dollars in revenue from 2019 to 2021. And yet you only went up a hundred million in operating profit. And then something weird happened in basically in 2020, you had 300, 
in operating profit. You went up to the dollar twenty seven in earnings per share, but back down to thirty nine cents per share. So they're not growing consistently with that operating margin. Something is really weird. Um, you went up to fifteen percent and then back down to ten percent. Um, just something to be aware of. I mean, especially when you think operating margin of ten percent on a price to sale of thirteen gives you maybe a sustainable price or to earnings ratio of 130. Again, incredibly overpriced company. Um, I want to see what they look like on a quarterly basis. Maybe some of these numbers are a little better. Still bouncing around. You can see some good quarters here. Again, 18%, 9%, 8%, 7%, 17%. But look at the last three quarters. 0.1%, 6%, 11%. This is not really something I can predict well into the future. And so... Um, this might be the start of a really good business. The, the company is being valued like it's going to be a really good business. You don't pay 13 times price to sales unless people are thinking it's going to be high growth and incredibly profitable. Unfortunately, the valuation is just untenable. Then maybe this is going to be something you put on a watch list for the future, but you are going to do poorly most of the time. The base rates are simply too high for massive losses if you buy stuff at a price to sales above 10. But if you enjoyed this video so far, please hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. Ring the bell so you can get notified as I upload new videos each and every week. I've already covered 130 companies in the S&P 500. And the playlist for those will be at the end of the video. Now, you can see the revenue and cost of goods sold. They're growing through the roof. I mean, you, you basically have grown your revenue 25x over the course of the decade. It's very, very impressive. Your growth rates look really good. Um, but your SG&A is also up more than 10x. Um, this is like 13x on your SGNA. So you're spending a lot of money there. You're up over 20x on RD and R&D. You're spending a lot of money there. So this money is all being dumped back into people, most likely. That's probably what this is, is you're paying people. Um, and, and that's causing dilution. I mean, look at this. You started the decade at 275 million shares outstanding. You ended at 400 shares outstanding. So you've diluted 60%. Is that right? 40 to 60% extra shares, and that's going to hurt your future returns. So that, that's part of what's the problem here is you're continuing to loot. That money's probably going a lot of cash-based compensation. And so, yeah, stock-based compensation, you do see that. Look, $100 million a year in stock-based compensation, and yet your income statement, you're not even earning like $100 million in net income. So you're really destroying a lot of your um, shareholder value because you're giving it away to the employees. This looks like a great way for employees to make a lot of money. I'm not seeing anything yet that says this is what non-employees would want. You see, it's definitely an intangible space business. This is can be positive and negative. I mean, they've been investing in PP&E here quite rapidly. I mean, look at these asset growths. Um, 600 million, you know, 300 million extra. Let's look at our cash flow. I mean, you're dumping a lot of money, basically all your cash flow from operations back into PP&E. But that's not all profits. You're substantially spending more than your profits. And it's actually overstating your profits because your depreciation is much lower than your PP&E expenses. These PP&E expenses have to be replaced in the future, so your depreciation is going to understate it for a year. Most likely, the company is not profitable even today because of how fast they're having to, to invest. Um, now, obviously, the, the thought is probably that this investment is for growth, so it'll pay off in the future, but it's really hard to tell based on the numbers that that's what's going to be true. Overall, this company is just simply too expensive for me to consider. It wouldn't go on my watch list personally because these companies that are priced at this just never get cheap enough in my experience. They never get cheap enough. Once they've been discovered like this, once they get to a $35 billion scale, I mean, I want to buy 10 baggers. How do I 10 bag from here? It's not going to go up to $350 billion. So the only way you 10 bag is if it loses 90% and then somehow comes back up. But what happens is once you've done a loss of like 80, 90%, usually they don't, they don't get the same massive multiple again in the future. And so I can't get the math to work where I'd ever want to invest in this company. So if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. If you think I'm wrong, please comment below and let me know why you think I'm wrong. I'd love to have that discussion. Um, and if you enjoy 
um, the type of content I'm doing, you need to be a subscriber. You should be a subscriber. Click that subscribe below. And if you want to see my other videos in SP 500 where I have found some companies that I find to be really good values and really high quality, then you need to check out the playlist up above. That will be coming up shortly for the SP 500 playlist that I've already been working through. Now, if you like this type of content and you want to do it yourself, then this software tool is available to you, quickfs.net. It is the sponsor for this video and it is the first link below where you can use my affiliate link. If you sign up with my affiliate link, it is a great way to support the channel because if you sign up for a free or a paid account, then I get credit for sending you to that channel so or to that service. This is the service I use for my own stock analysis, and I think it's a great one that you should consider as well. Until next time, stop paying fees, start building wealth.